All right, in these boxes, we have an updated version of this battery. We have our M8 terminal bolts. We have two different sizes there, a short one and a long one. Our owner's manual. All right, and here's the batteries. So the case looks uh, the same as the original one. Uh, the color scheme's a little different. This one's a little different color here. Uh, that one's green here, the new one. It says X, Z, and Y on top of the old one. The new ones don't have that. So what these are supposed to be, the updated ones, it's supposed to be a more precise low temperature protection. You know, I already did a review of this one, and it did have low temperature protection on it. But I'm guessing that from what I'm reading on the literature is that this one's more precise. Like it, maybe it's faster or maybe the parameters are updated or something. And one of the really cool things about these batteries is the size. So this is a 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. And it's very compact. Like it's literally just a little bit larger than a group 31 12 volt battery. So we can compare the size of this 12 volt 100 amp hour battery to this compact 24 volt battery. And it's very close. I mean, it is a little bit larger. It's a little bit taller, uh, but it's very close in size. And the price of these batteries is really good. So here's Amazon and this battery on Amazon is $389.99. <laughs> so that's a really good price for a 24 volt, 100 amp hour. And it's a compact battery, so it's smaller. So let's get a weight on this battery. And it has come out at 39.8 pounds. Now let's weigh the original one. Oh, and it's actually heavier. So it's coming out at 45.6 pounds. Wow. So these are lighter. That's awesome. All right, so I think what I want to do is, since they sent us two, I want to charge them both up and then put them in series. And let's try them out as a 48 volt pack. All right, guys, so before we can put these in series, we need to fully charge both batteries. That way they're fully topped off and they're at the same state of charge. Because if we don't do that, one could be a lower state of charge than the other and it'll be completely out of balance. And so I'm gonna actually first wire them in parallel and then charge them up together in parallel. But before I do that, we, we have to measure the voltage to make sure they're not very far apart. Because if the voltage is a large difference, when I place them in parallel, there'll be a large amount of current transfer, and I don't want that. So let's measure this first battery, and we're at 26.3 volts. Let's measure the other battery, and we're at 26.3 volts. So that is acceptable. We can go ahead and place these batteries in parallel. Okay, and now we can charge these batteries up in parallel. And we'll plug in the AC power of the charger. And we are charging. All right, so I'll be back whenever this is fully charged. All right, so the batteries are fully charged now, and I have gone ahead and put them in series. So this is now a 48 volt pack. And we can see with my shunt, it's reading 54.95 volts. So I do have my inverter hooked up, and we're gonna run this AC as a load. So we're gonna do a capacity test. Let's go ahead and start it. Okay, inverter's on. Let's turn the air conditioner on. 
All right. And so we are now drawing power, almost 900 watts, uh, 16 amps. So I'll just let that continue on, and when it's complete, I'll return. All right, guys, the test is complete. Uh, the batteries have shut down, so I'm going to have to hook up this charger just to wake them back up real quick. So we'll do that now. All right, now we are awake, and we can see that we did, in fact, get all the way down to zero on my shot here. So that means that we did in fact at least pull out 100 amp hours. So that means that we passed the test. So let me get this out of the way. And using the app for the shunt, I can see how much kilowatt hours we discharged. And we've got 5.34 kilowatt hours. So 5,340 watt hours divided by nominal voltage of 51.2 gives us 104.29 amp hours. Very good. All right, guys, so I got the lid cracked open here. So let's take a peek. There we go. We're in. All right, so our BMS says X, Z, and Y on it. If you can see that. X, Z, and Y. I do see a thermal sensor right there. We've got double eight gauge silicon jacketed wire, 200 Celsius on the negative. We've got uh, I think it's a six gauge 200 Celsius on the positive. We do have prismatic cells. I think we've got welded bus bars this time. Yep. So we can take a look at this one and compare it against the old one. All right, here's the original one. We can take a look and see what the differences are. Yeah, and it looks like the cells take up more room in this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so We've got more of a gap here on the new model. About the same gap here on the back. But uh, yeah, clearly there's more uh, room taken up by these cells. Oh, and also in this direction, these cells are smaller on the newer one. Whereas on the original one, these cells are taking up a lot more room in this. Well, it's actually taking up all the room in this dimension. Uh, the BMS looks, yeah, it's a different kind of BMS. Looks a little different here. All right, well, let's test the low temperature protection on the new one. Okay, so we are putting in 29.2 amps. So let's freeze this thermal sensor up and see if we can get it to shut down. There we go. So we stopped charging. So the low temperature protection does work. And we are back to charging now. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you think about these batteries. I'll leave links in the description and I'll catch you in the next one.